Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. In this video, I wanna give you a gear check for my latest trip to Front Sight. So this time around, I went down for the two-day tactical handgun class, which is the next step above the four-day uh, defensive handgun class if you get a distinguished graduate certificate from that four-day class. Um, above this one, there's also um, master prep, uh, which I think you just need a graduate from um, from the two-day tactical handgun to move up to master prep. Master prep. I actually got the distinguished graduate in two-day tactical handgun, which was awesome. I was three, one of three in my class that managed to do that. So big <laughs> hooray for me, I guess. But in any case, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the class. But I'm going to do a recap of the class in a separate video. So look for that on my channel. In this video, once again, we're just doing a gear check, talking about what I used and how it worked out for me. Uh, some of the mishaps I might have had, some of the things that are still working great. And um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about right off the bat is the gun that I used, and that was the Glock 17 Gen 4. Why not a Gen 5? Well, I don't have a Gen 5. I bought this secondhand. Actually, I traded a rifle for this. Really good trade, in my opinion. Um, this has been working out fantastic for me. It's got the uh, tritium night sights on it, and yeah, it's just you know Glock 17. What else can you say about it? I'm probably going to get some modifications done to this or maybe do some myself. I found that in the shooting that I did throughout the two-day course, uh, this became a big hot spot for me right under here. And I probably want to get rid of this stuff here as well, the, uh, the finger grooves. When and how much I might pay for that, I don't know yet. Will I just do the frame? Will I do a slide modification as well? I honestly don't know at this point. I've, um, I've seen some options out there. I'm tempted by some of them, but I don't know if I'm gonna do any of that uh, just now. As a stock Glock, it ran perfectly fine. Um, cleaned it up a little bit. It wasn't like a perfectly thorough cleaning on, before I brought it down but you know, just made sure it was lubed well and fairly clean. Shot 450 plus rounds through it uh, during the class. No malfunctions uh, to speak of with this gun. So worked out really well. On that, you can also see the Olight. There's the Olight logo there. PL2 Valkyrie uh, light. This is a super efficient, very simple light. You can see that uh, taking it off is just a matter of throwing that little switch right there. It just pops right off, super simple operation. Then it drops right back in, seats perfectly on the Glock frame. So there's no moving it forward or back or trying to get it in just the right position as with some other lights that I've tried. It just seats in the exact right position right off the bat. Throw that switch, it's attached firmly. Uh, there's no moving around or at least there hadn't been throughout the class. Now it feels like it is moving around ever so slightly and I'll adjust that or, or see what needs to be done with that. But um, yeah, it, it performed perfectly throughout the class. Now, the two-day tactical handgun course is a um, does use a, a flashlight at some point, so there is a night shoot portion of the class. So a portion of that night shoot I did do with the PL2. Used this light actually the entire time throughout all the shooting I did in that class, but um, kind of switched between using the weapon mounted light and a separate light, which I'll show you in a second, just because I wanted to um, work on the technique, the Harry's technique or Harris technique, uh, using the light like so, and we'll talk again about that again in my recap, but I wanted to kind of learn that and uh, learn that effectively, and you can't really do that with a weapon mounted light, so. They, of course, give you the option of either using the weapon mounted light or the, uh, the separate light. I wanted to kind of use both throughout the course. But there's the gun, there's the light, and once again, the Olight PL2, sent to me by Olight for testing and review. I'm gonna do more on it, including getting it wet, including dropping it and seeing and if, finding out if it fails. But as far as using it throughout this two-day class, it performed fantastically. So, thumbs up so far. Um, let's move on to the holster I use, which I believe is made by MIE Productions. And the I actually had to make a small modification to it. It came with, I think, one and a half inch clips on it. Not clips, but just uh, little belt loops that I believe just hung on this side of it. And the belt I use is actually 1.75 inch belt. So I kind of just pulled these off of another holster that I had and used it like so. And I did have to drill a little hole down at the bottom of the Kydex in order to be able to do that, but that was not a big deal either. 
Uh, so that's how the holster, or that's the holster that I used. This is like, I wanna say 60, maybe 70 bucks on amazon.com. Comes in a wide variety of guns with a wide variety of lights. And the fact that it came for Glock 17 with the Olight PL2 was a huge selling point to me, obviously because obviously that was my combination. So that's what I went, that's why I went with it. And as you can see, fits perfectly in there, seats well, retention is very, very good. A lot of the retention is dependent on this little bump right here, the latch of the flashlight. That's primarily where you get re your retention from for this. But again, doesn't rattle, doesn't shake around, and it definitely does not fall out. Retention's very good on the holster, so thumbs up for it. And I'll uh, leave a link down in the description if you're interested in buying one of these for your Glock 17 with a PL2, or again, any other combination because they seem to work just fine. Back to the belt, and I've shown this in previous videos. This is the 511 double duty belt. Tan on one side, black on the other. Um, and that's kind of the primary selling point of it is that you would use it either in a dress, normal dress situation or in your tactical situation. But because it is doubled up with two different uh, layers of that nylon, it's also fairly rigid, not perfectly rigid. You can see that I can squeeze it there, but it's fairly rigid, particularly for the price. And again, there's something like 20 bucks. So if you're looking for an affordable, range belt something that you can either put along on the outside or just run through your uh, belt loops and use in a tactical class like i did this works just fine and again it's super cheap you can certainly go much higher much nicer than that some cool battle belts or competition belts but uh, for me that's been working out just fine and on top of that i didn't show you this but i do have the the readyman.com um what do you call this thing again the edc belt loop I bought like three or four of these to put on different belts. Super handy. I didn't use it much for the class, but I love having it. Uh, talking about the hearing protection, just the Howard Light Impact Sport. Still work well. I think this is my third or fourth pair. I did have one pair fail on me, but pretty much anytime I see a sale on these, I pick up a pair of them because it's fun to outfit the whole family with them and then you can take everybody shooting everybody can hear each other but their hearing is also protected so that's great hellstorm knee pads blackhawk i think um, not required for the class but very useful we did a little bit of shooting from kneeling shooting from prone that was all optional you never had to do any of that but they taught us how to and you want to save your knees if you're going to be shooting from kneeling and shooting from prone when you're dropping down onto gravel, which is what the situation is there at uh, the range at front sight. So brought those along, used them for a portion of the class and um, didn't use them for the rest, but uh, they're fine. They're old. They're not uh, the most up to date or articulated knee pad, but they work okay. And they're pretty inexpensive. What haven't we covered on this side? Pit crew gloves, shown these in a previous video made by CLC, Custom Leathercraft. These ones are about worn out and I probably should have bought fresh ones before I came down. Um, however, they worked out fine. They got a nice grip to them. They give you pr some pretty good dexterity because they're very thin, but again, the coating on them gives you a nice grip on uh, whatever it is you're grasping. So um, I'm liking these gloves still quite a bit. Lower on the protection, higher on the dexterity is what you get with those and super cheap, like eight bucks. Uh, well, let's see, what else can we cover? Backpack, I brought this again. And again, this is what I used like a year and a half ago, but uh, that is the SOG, I wanna say it's called the Ranger backpack, but this is what I kept all my range gear in and sort of traveled around uh, the site with. Uh, Basically any backpack will work. It's nice if it's got some Molly connections on it though, so that you can clip a lot of things to the outside and you're not constantly having to shove things down in or whatever. You can just kind of pull things off of your bag. So a nice tactical backpack is useful uh, when you come down to a class like this. Um, we've got a couple other things to talk about here. Let's move on to the handheld flashlight that I used while I used the handheld flashlight. And that's the Thrunite TN12 multi-mode takes a single 18650 battery or two CR123s. It does have that tactile switch on the back of it, on the tail cap. So, you know, responds well there with a click. And it's also got um, that uh, little temporary uh, mode as well, where you just press it in momentary is, what I, is the word I was looking for. So this is a great size for using in a class like this because you want, 
get to feel your hand well when you're getting into that Harris position. And, um, and also have lots on the outside of your knuckle. So if, it's, if your hand completely envelops the, uh, the flashlight, as is the case with my Olight S1R, if your hand completely envelops that and you don't have a tail cap, this is not gonna work for that type of situation, particularly not for a class. Now in an emergency, I could make this work, but it wouldn't be, it would not be preferable. So again, a good sized, large-ish sized flashlight that's still pocketable, uh, really useful for that class. Brought four magazines for the Glock. One of those was the Magpul, what is it called again? The PMAG 17 GL9. Uh, brought this down as one of the magazines that I used throughout the class. So I made sure that my spare magazine, the one I didn't use for the most part, was a Glock magazine so that I had just a Glock branded magazine in case I wanted to switch to that. I'm glad I brought that because I didn't really enjoy using the Magpul branded magazines. Um, something about them is just a lot more friction as you're loading them. And I talked to a couple other guys in the class. My experiences with these magazines have all been positive. Um, they work even when they get a little dusty and dirty. But I have talked to, like I said, some of the other guys in the class who've had bad experiences using these feeding issues and so forth. So. I think, from my personal perspective, I would rather just use Glock Standard magazines, um, but it's good to have these as backups and as uh, range training. And so, in fact, as the class went on and it got to the point where I needed to have an empty mag for um, doing malfunction drills, this was the one that I went to, and this is the one that I was more happy to drop on the ground and in the gravel. But there's that. Getting down to the last couple of things, these are the mag pouches that I used made by Wilder Tactical. Got two of these. Wilder Tactical did send me these for testing and review, and this is basically the review of them. You may see a little bit more on these in a future video, but uh, they've got a good one and three quarter inch belt loop clip right there. It went over my belt just fine. The way it's set up here, it looks like Kydex, kind of has that Kydex texture to it. It's actually not Kydex, it's a thermoplastic. Uh, that's not a problem, it works fine, and we, uh, we rough these things up pretty good in the class. But we've got basically a sort of a bungee cord, shock cord, going through all of this, holding all that together. Nice, thick, durable shock cord on there with that uh, shock cord retainer down there at the bottom. And it wraps through there through a few holes, creating that tension that you need for your magazines. See that? There, creates the tension you need for any size magazines, whether it's a single stack or double stack. So it is shrink down to hold a single stack, like for instance, a 1911 magazine, and expands out, bellows out, and see if you can see that, stretches out like so when you stuff a, uh, a double stack down in there. So it doesn't matter what brand double stack it is, the retention all comes from this shock cord, and um, it's, it's just set out to be structurally very good. We don't have a lot of, the, the shock cord doesn't create any interference in there. So that's one key thing to talk about is that they have molded these properly so the shock cord wraps around into these little valleys and doesn't ever touch the magazine. So there's no abrasion against the shock cord, which means it's gonna last longer. And also it doesn't drag against the magazine. So you don't get too much friction or any more friction than you should have. So these have been working well. Again, we've got the, the two for pistol that I've been testing out. I've also got three now for AR-15. They sent me two of them. I bought a, sec a third one because I like them a lot. And um, yeah, we'll be testing those a bit more and showing you some more of these Wilder Tactical products in uh, future videos. They're priced pretty well. I don't remember what the pistol magazines are. I want to say 30 or so, maybe a bit less, but they're priced well and uh, they worked fantastic. So I recommend them. And I'll give you links to these uh, if I can find links to provide you with. Freedom Munitions with the ammo, I ran through the gun. Performed terrific, 124 grain, new manufacturer, nine millimeter. And, and like I said, performed great throughout the two day course. Freedom Munitions, as you know, has been sending me a fair bit of ammo to shoot um, in a lot of my videos. So I do appreciate them and you can use coupon code TLBS to get 5% off your Freedom Munitions um, uh, purchase. So. Do, do take advantage of that. Now, here is, if I'm not mistaken, the last thing we're gonna cover in this video, and that's this stuff right here, Quick Draw. This is a spray, a lubricant spray that you can use for your holster, your mag, your mag pouches. This 
lubricates the inside of your holster, the inside of your mag pouches and so forth to make your gun draw faster and slicker. It creates, a, again, a, a lower friction surface. So reinserting and drawing and reinserting and drawing, even with the dust that continues to build up when you're out here in environments like this, wind and dust does build up. You might be hearing some wind in the uh, microphone right now. That stuff builds up and this helps to take care of it. So in, uh, in this case, there's my uh, Glock 17 MIE holster, right? I would just take this and whether it's on my belt or not, just give it a few quick hits like that. That's it. That's about all you need. And it makes a pretty big, pretty big difference. Like uh, my wife used it. She noticed a big difference. I was using it throughout the class. I noticed a huge difference from times when I was using this holster without the lubricant to when I used it with the lubricant. It contains liquefied petroleum, uh, silicone, and lanolin. It, uh, it works well, what can I say? But that is basically the gear check, guys. All, all good stuff. Didn't have serious problems with anything here on the table. It all worked out really well for me. Uh, the class, again, if you want a recap of that, stay tuned for a separate video, which I may have posted before this. I'm not really sure about the order in which I'm gonna release these videos, but uh, I do wanna do a recap to show you guys um, kind of what I learned in the tactical handgun course. Uh, some of the stuff that was really fun, some of the stuff that I don't know, it was just a blast to learn and was kind of mind bending and fun. And some of the challenges, because there were definitely some challenges that were associated in some cases with some of the gear. And, but we'll try to cover that uh, in, the vi in the upcoming video and also talk about how that was overcome in a pretty fun way. But again, stay tuned for that video and I'll cover it. But that's been the front sight gear check again for the two day tactical handgun. Had a blast taking the class and uh, the gear all worked out great. I'm Lay Boy Scout. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you